and I am the public. Thank you, Jen. We are recording this meeting so that we can put the presentations on our public input page so that those who could not make it tonight can still see the presentations. Um, so I'm Kelly McChesney, public art director with the city of Raleigh. And uh, tonight with the city, I also have uh, Jen Hales with me. Uh, art coordinator, city of Raleigh. And Grayson. Hi, good evening. I'm Grayson Vaughn, project manager um, for the design of Plaza Play. Good to see you all. And we also have uh, Stacy Rex uh, Bloom Rex Road, who is the curator for the city here tonight. Um, we also have our artists as well, and you'll you'll uh, get to meet them in just a, a moment. Um, but before we start with that, I'd love to go ahead and uh, share my screen and give you a little bit of a background information about um, somewhat of the process of how the artists were selected and the timeline, just so you have a, a bit of history. Just one moment. All right, so uh, this is a phrase that comes from our, uh, our, our um, cultural plan from 2016, that Raleigh is a community connected through arts and culture where every person is empowered to lead the creative life they envision. Um, we hope that this applies into our public art um, projects as we move forward. I have put our, our public art at Plaza and Play website up for you to take a look at, and we'll, we'll keep bringing this up throughout the presentation or at the end, but is publicinput.com slash plaza play art. And on this site, you can learn more about the project, but you can also find out up-to-date information about um, any recordings we've made, upcoming presentations or community engagement events, um, and also surveys that may be available. And when we get some designs together, we'll also have them there for some input too. Um, just a little bit for virtual meeting etiquette. This is a, a meeting, not a webinar. So you are here to talk with the artists and ask questions. Um, but we do ask that you mute when not speaking. Um, raise your hand if you'd like to speak. And then um, we do have presentations for you from each of the artists. So we just ask that you reserve your questions for the end of the meeting or put them in chat. And we'll, we'll try and address them as we, as we go forward. And again, this meeting will be recorded and posted on our website. So the Dix Park Plaza and Play project um, went through a master plan process. And this is the first part of, of that whole master plan um, project at Dix Park. Um, it aspires to be an inviting and inspiring public space for all ages with one of a kind play spaces, civic plaza, fountains, gardens, areas to cook out and relax with family and friends. And the history of the site will come alive through public art, interpretive signage, Rehabilitated, uh, rehabilitated historic house, um, or maybe artwork that is um, just there to help, um, you know, in, in increase the interactivity of the park as well. This is a rendering of, of the plaza site. And again, this is just one piece of the Dix Park, par, uh, Dix park uh, project. It's 18 acres within the park currently located um, along Wake Lake Wheeler Road. And I think there is a, there's a temporary dog park there now for those of you who don't know. So this is the plan um, currently for the design and it will go through a few more changes, I'm sure. But this is the plan that the artist will be working on, looking at all the different areas that could be available for um, uh, art integration. A little bit about our process. So we go through um, kind of an extensive open transparent process for selecting artists. Um, we put together with um, the Public Art and Design Board, which is a volunteer board, uh, an RFQ that goes out na uh, nationally and locally to artists to apply for this project. For this specific project, we received 101 applications. And then we also have artist selection panels for each projects. And these consist of members of the community, community leaders, stakeholder groups. Uh, we always make sure we have artists and design professionals on from the community on the panel as well. Member of the project team and a public art and design board um, liaison. Um, for this specific panel, we did have a, a bigger group because there are so many committees involved with Dix Park. Um, so I think that that made the process much better. Uh, they did spend about 25 hours um, over the period of two, three weeks 
going through and reviewing um, the, the applications and selecting the artists. Some of the things that were considered, some of the criteria for public art for this project in, in particular were th that the work be permanent and durable, um, definitely unified with the landscape because this is a, a big landscape architecture team working on the project. Um, and that the artwork might create a unique identity and sense of place for the project. Uh, also that it considers to, you know, inspiration for a sense of play, welcome and reflection for all. And artists um, are encouraged to create artwork that invites direct interaction with the body, so be touchable. We don't want anything so precious that people can't interact with it in this park. So our timeline, these, these requests for qualifications went out in March. Um, our community selection panel was appointed in April and the applications came in in June and then it was a very quick turnaround. So we had our first round of review where the semi-finalists were selected. There were 10 semi-finalists that came to interview um, for the panel. And then the second round of interview where the finalists were selected. Um, we're still in working in contract phase at the moment, um, but we are also in the research and development phase and engagement um, phase of this project. So the artists are really diving into a lot of the, the materials that have been provided through the master plan process, through the extensive community engagement process that, um, that the city has already done as a part of this project. Um, and then also this is our first um, event with the public and the artists tonight, and we will have more um, upcoming as well as, as we progress. And then September through October, the artists will come up with um, their first kind of concept design ideas. And we hope to have the integration of artwork, um, these conceptual designs um, into those design documents in November with final design phase likely, you know, summer, fall, and then, um, the construction installation will follow the, the park's construction installation uh, process. So I'm gonna end my presentation just by showing our contact information again. We can show this at the end of the meeting. Um, but again, this will be the website to go to to learn more and find out updates about the project. And then my personal contact is here. And of course, Jen Hale's contact is below as well for the public art part of this project. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen and I will first introduce uh, the first artist, Donald Lipsky. We have three artists selection, selected for this project, Donald Lipsky and Mark Riegelman and Lee Chapman. So Donald, um, you are welcome to go ahead and share your screen and give a little bit of information about yourself and your process. Thank you, uh, that's wonderful. Um, first off, it looks like you are just making a wonderful, wonderful park. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be part of it. Now, let me figure out how to share my screen. Uh, host disabled participant. I think I just, I just did a trick. Try again, Donald, sorry about that. Okay. Oh, there we go. Let's go there. Let's see how that works. Okay. That should work. Nope. Nope. Let's try something else. Oh, how's that? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Donald Lipsky. I'm an artist. I'm speaking to you uh, from Amagansett, Long Island. Um, I've spent some time in North Carolina. My sister used to live in uh, Asheville, and I was there several times, including for her wedding. Um, in uh, 1990, I traveled all over North Carolina uh, while creating a work for uh, Sika in Winston-Salem. Uh, as a, a new ex-smoker at that time, uh, I worked with R.J. Reynolds making work out of cigarettes. Uh, but the heart of the show was humidors, uh, each containing the number of cigarettes I had smoked in my 30 years as a smoker. Uh, Reynolds gave me back the hundreds of thousands of cigarettes that I had smoked. So uh, thank you, RJ Reynolds. Um, out of all the public art artworks I've made across the country, uh, there are a couple 
within a few hours of Raleigh. Uh, this is the Levine Children's Hospital in Charlotte. I made uh, a treasure trove of crystals uh, opposite the lobby's uh, six-story curtain wall window. Um, I also used crystals uh, in this chandelier at New York's Grand Central Terminal, uh, an upside down olive tree hung with thousands of Austrian crystals. Uh, making this sculpture led me to making other works uh, that appear to be wood uh, and are quite magical. Uh, and this is an avenue uh, that I might pursue uh, here in the city of Oaks, even though I'm, I'm told you have enough oak sculptures <laughs> to last a lifetime, uh, I'm still, it's something I'm thinking about. Uh, and to your east, uh, Virginia Beach was replacing a main bridge into town a couple of years ago. Uh, at an overlook along the pedestrian path, uh, I made a work out of canoes that I cut out in an elaborate filigree pattern. Uh, like Dorothy Dix, Dorothea Dix Park, this site has a rich and complex history. The canoes grew out of uh, a beautiful story from that history. Uh, back then, to get from uh, where most of the people were living, uh, to the good fishing waters uh, was a three hour journey. Uh, but then an uh, inventive man named Adam Keeling got his friends together and they dug a canal just wide enough for a canoe. And in time, it opened up into the Lindhaven outlet, uh, which this bridge spans. Um, I had uh, some wonderful engagement with the community uh, along the way. And over time, they have really embraced the peace. Uh, I don't yet really know Raleigh, uh, but I have a great asset in my colleague, Lee Chapman, who you'll be hearing from shortly, uh, who has lived most of his life here. Uh, we're talking about perhaps working collaboratively here at Dick's Park. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, this little uh, park along the Delaware River in Philadelphia is where uh, William Penn signed an enduring peace treaty with the Lenape tribe. To get to the park from uh, the nearby neighborhood, you have to first pass under the interstate. I put a lamppost on either side and perched on top a turkey and a wolf for two of the three clans of the Lenape tribe. And when you walk under the highway, you come to a series of lamps that are mounted on the backs of turtles made of bronze. Uh, the third, and most local clan. And these turtles seem to be marching down towards the beach, down towards the park. This work, uh, which will be going in next fall is in Arlington, Virginia, uh, made from an actual wind turbine blade. They had windmills in Virginia back in uh, George Washington's time. Um, in this neighborhood, there are 160 languages spoken. Uh, so I'm covering the base in coins from around the world that were donated by the citizens. Uh, so it'll very much be their piece. Uh, I've used coins elsewhere, like in this piece made from ocean mooring buoys uh, which is in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Uh, in 1990, that's 30 years ago, it was on the lawn of the White House uh, and it's now on loan to the University of Texas in Austin. 
and for New York's Central Park Conservancy for their 150th anniversary, they held an auction and I made them a bench covered with old subway tokens. I've tried to involve uh, communities I work with in many ways, large and small. Uh, for the new Caesar Pelly designed library in Minneapolis, I made this for the arts and music uh, floor. Uh, and I rounded up all the kids in the city's violin programs. Uh, and we all carved our names in the violins. To make this piece at the Fort Worth Convention Center, we held a party uh, and admission was one hat. Uh, and we got hats uh, from people all over town, including uh, George Bush Sr., uh, actor Slim Pickens, uh, and other luminaries, uh, and from hundreds of ordinary citizens. A few years back, San Antonio, Texas, expanded its WPA arrow river walk. And the landscape architects were afraid that when they got to an interstate underpass that no one would venture past uh, its forbidding darkness. I proposed a school of goldfish. And at a community meeting, not unlike this one, I was told about the tiny native long long-eared sunfish that live in the river. And that is what I made, uh, but seven feet long. And they light up at night. Uh, every evening, people gather to see the bats who love, live under the highway fly out. Uh, and then the fish light up. Uh, and everyone cheers and heads out to the cantina. Uh, some sculptures just find their spot. Uh, I made uh, other works with buoys, including this pile of 55 buoys at the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis, meant to be up for a year. About four or five years later, they called me up and said that they were ready to send it back to me. Uh, you can fit six of these in a truck. Uh, so I, I certainly didn't have any place to put them. Uh, so I made this new 100 yard long piece at Longmire Sculpture Garden in St. Louis, bolting the, the buoys together uh, like a string of pearls. This sculpture uh, was originally shown uh, in Central Park in New York. A philanthropist bought it and gave it to the city of Denver to place out the, outside the children's wing of the Michael Graves designed main library. It's become very much an icon in the city. Uh, my son, Jackson, who will be 30 uh, on his next birthday, grew up thinking that the sculpture was his idea. Uh, he just guessed the truth a couple years ago. This dog, Spot, uh, is outside NYU's new children's hospital, uh, just a few blocks from my apartment. Uh, it balances an actual taxi on her nose, uh, a Prius. Uh, it's near the East River on 34th Street uh, in New York, a, a main road. Uh, my original idea uh, was a stuffed toy dog holding a real taxi. Uh, and it was chosen in a competition and approved. Uh, but this woman, woman Dr. Uh, Mano, the head of pediatrics at the hospital, came to me hoping that I could find a way 
to make it less childlike, more dignified. I think I ended up giving it the attributes that you would want in a doctor, uh, patience and concentration, uh, sweetness, uh, determination. Uh, Spot now has her own mask since last summer. And at this intense time, it's been very uh, wonderful and instructive for the kids. This is uh, Boston Common, the oldest public park in America, 1634. Uh, the gold dome here is the state capitol. Uh, and across the way is this, uh, the Cathedral Church of St. Paul, a 200 year old building. They had intended to have sculpture in the pediment, but they ran out of money. Uh, but a few years ago, uh, I gave it this, a slice uh, through the shell of a chambered Nautilus, uh, aiming to make it something spiritual, uh, but not religious. El Paso, Texas has this odd roundabout near the university that acts as a below grade passage uh, from a parking lot to the university. Uh, I made a cloud with little flaps uh, that blow in the wind. So it's always very active. And the last piece I'm gonna show you, uh, this is uh, in Goodyear, Arizona, uh, where the ball team, the baseball team that's recently been renamed uh, the Cleveland Guardians do their spring training. Uh, I made a replica of Brancusi's famous sculpture, uh, The Bird in Flight, but with stitches like a baseball. Uh, and it's become uh, very much uh, an emblem, uh, not just for the team in the ballpark, uh, but for the city. So uh, I will stop sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Donald. I appreciate that. Um, and now we will go ahead and allow um, uh, Johnny Lee Chapman, if you'd like to share your screen and present a little about your work, that'd be great. All right, let's see here. Okay. I think this should do it. All right, is that is that there? Uh, we can we can see it with the slides on the side. Um, All right, and let's see how do we go to slideshow. Okay, great. Here we go. All right. Uh, first off, thank you everybody for being here. My name is Johnny Lee Chapman III, and uh, this is an overview of what I've got ideas for Dick's Park. So I'd like to start off with a, a poem uh, right quick. Dick's Park is a place where everybody should feel safe to be themselves, both nature and human, commune in peace, a space for joy and shouts and silent musings on the benches, where wishing fountains refresh youthful spirits and weathered bones find love. Again, the sun gives light to the leaves and lives of those with roots settled in a city where the legacy is written by the community. So just a brief bit about me. My name is Johnny Lee Chapman III. I am from Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina. I was born there, but I like to claim that Raleigh raised me. I went to uh, Southeast Raleigh High and actually got a good bit of my artistry and creative journey started here in Raleigh. The medium that I work in is I'm a writer as well as a spoken word artist primarily. And I also have an, an incorporation of visual art with film and photography. So just a, a couple of things that I have been a part of in the past. We've got the Carolina Performing Arts at UNC Chapel Hill Artist in Residence, the Black on Black Project, which is a curatorial project that is uh, creates works that focus around Black history in North Carolina, the North Carolina Museum of Art, the Fayetteville Arts Council, Cameron Art Museum, 
the Poetry Slam Incorporated, the Visual Arts Exchange or VAE, and then the Downtown Raleigh Alliance. And here we go. Uh, just again, some understanding, because um, for me, I am not a structural artist. So the, the, the big challenge for me has been, how can I create works that will be permanent? Whereas a lot of my works is more performative and in the moment. So it has been a unique way to think outside the box. So just to, again, some previous material uh, is a quote, uh, an event called Vital Health where we worked with the Black on Black Project, a performance and installation artist named Stacy L. Kirby, as well as a videographer, Julia Wall. And what we were able to create from this was a poetry film, which is called Crisis Materials. And this also followed a workshop where we partnered with licensed therapists and social workers to talk about mental health, COVID-19, social unrest in today's times, as well as panel discussions and live performances. The next one is The Will of the Father, which is a collaboration again between the Black on Black Project, the structure artist Stephen Hayes, as well as the videographer Jade Wilson. This one actually was talking about the history of Dick's Park. Um, a lot of people might not know that it was originally a slave plantation owned by the son of the founder of Raleigh named Isaac Hunter. And Theophilus Hunter Sr. is the name of the plantation owner. And he actually passed along 61 slaves to his family after his after he passed away, which came the title of the will of the father. So focusing on the history of North Carolina as specifically in Dix Park has been a unique thing that I've been able to work on these last two to three years. Another example is uh, Southern Discomfort, which is a collaboration between me as well as the Carolina Performing Arts digital residency and a videographer by the name of Woe Imaging. And this was a 30 minute storytelling production that again highlighted the lesser known histories about North Carolina, talking about from the first days of colonization on the coast to urban myths and legends that are located in the mountain areas. And the last thing I'll talk about is the Illuminate Art Walk. This was uh, happened in 2020. It was a collaboration with a movement choreographer and dancer, Anthony Otto Nelson Jr., which was sponsored by VAE and Downtown Raleigh Alliance. And again, this was another one of those challenging moments for me to figure out how can I create poetry in a way that lives off of the page? How can I bring words to a space that can stand along with structures and along with materials? And the creation we were able to bring together was an experimental silent film that incorporated both poetry as well as choreograph choreographed movement. So when it came to the idea for Dix Park, my vision was to allow that Dix Park is a reflection of Raleigh. The place wanted to be innovative, inviting and inspiring. These are all the things that Raleigh represents now and is continuing to implement into itself as we are engaging in creating this new chapter for the city. And because of that, we want to be able to represent both the old and new citizens and culture. It's, a, it's in a state where we don't want to wipe away what has been done, but we also want to be able to create space for what is going to continue to be done. The second aspect is returnable art which is artwork that will invoke multiple viewings, things that you'll be able to come back to over the course of your journey here in Raleigh. Maybe you're just here for a weekend or maybe you live here and every two to three months you wanna go back to this art piece because it's changed and so have you since the last time. So this will encourage diversity, discovery of both the park, the community, as well as the self. And the last point would be engaging evolution. And uh, I am 29 years old, so I am considered a millennial, but I'm in that that funny ground where I grew up outside and like hanging out when the lights, you know, had to go off and then you got to go inside, but also knowing how to get on instant messaging in sixth grade. So I have a little bit of understanding on both aspects. And because of that, I want to make sure that we are able to promote the past, the present and the future, because tomorrow's history is being written today. So when it came to uh, a couple of ideas, and that's what I was really able, I think, to bring to the table is innovative ideas, things that might, things that might be considered a little bit different or unconventional, but um, 
I wanted it to be collaborative effort between the fabricators, the design team, local artists, as well as myself to generate specific art pieces, specifically along the walkways, because I think about how the master plan was set up and we have these large areas like the fountain as well as the gardens, but everything is connected by pathways. And sometimes the pathways to from one place to the next can be kind of quiet, kind of boring in some aspects. So what if we were able to sprinkle bits of artwork along the pathway to make it engaging as well as while individuals walk? And I'll also say, take a moment to talk about collaboration. Uh, from, the, from my previous work, a lot of the things that I mentioned were naturally calling, was a natural uh, communication and collaboration between different artists of all different backgrounds and mediums. For me, I think a lot of the work that I'm able to really generate some of the some of the best pieces that I feel like we've been able to create has come from putting multiple heads together as opposed to one singular idea. So with that being said, to to be able to work with individuals like Donald and hopefully Mark as well, and just being able to enhance what has already been presented as opposed to coming in and saying, this is what it's going to be, this is how it is, and that's it. So some examples of some visions for the park, the entry archways and welcome signs. Um, the idea tentatively was in neon because when you think about an entrance and an exit, even to a building, there's always an exit sign that is glowing. So no matter where you would be in the park, you would always know where is your, your, out, your entry point or where can you leave. And um, looking through some of the public input already, there's a lot of talk about what is gonna be the statement and the phrase that welcomes people to the park. So hopefully working with the design team, that could be a thing that I'm able to bring some input into. Another example would be glass sculptures highlighting specific historical events through prose and imagery. Again, utilizing different materials that can represent themselves already, but tying in that History is a way to give context to these creations. Again, knowing Raleigh the way that I do and being able to already have a working relationship with Dick's Park and the people involved in the conservancy, there's been an understanding of the history that I've been able to gather over the last two to three years. And finding a way to represent that history in a place where there's so much going on, I want it to serve as a bullet point so that individuals will wanna go on their own terms and figure out the depth of the history. So they find, they'd say, okay, wow, this was a slave plantation. Let me learn more about this. Or, oh, this was a mental hospital. And, oh, there was a cemetery where bodies are buried. Well, let me do some more digging as opposed to having the lecture and the words all right there to kind of stop you on your walk through Dick's Park. Another example would be inspirational quotes, uh, either embedded or stenciled into the concrete pathways and play area. Again, one of the big things about Dick's Park is the play space uh, for all ages. And I think if you were able to make the walkway like a game of scavenger hunt, where there's different stencils or pieces of a, a poem or phrases that you're able to bounce along and follow as you go from, let's say, the fountain to the playground. It makes it, again, more interactive and giving that sense of, um, of joy and play along with it. So again, more things about signage. Uh, for me, again, talking about the digital aspect, um, QR codes. I think with COVID, everything kind of shifted to a semi quasi digital world. And I think when we are talking about engaging with all different generations, uh, Gen Z is a very technological virtual generation. So we might be able to get them in the park, but they might still have their phones. But what if there was a way for them to take their phone scan a QR code and it leads to a, an audio or a performance or an animated video that once again adds a realm of artwork that exists and it's still technically considered public art, but it also opens up the door for possibilities about what kind of work you can create by just having the QR code attached to a particular project. Um, two more things. Poetry and painting incorporated into the stairwells. It might not be the case now, but finding again ways to just subtly incorporate poetry into spaces where you wouldn't consider words to be possible at. 
And last thing, again, talking about the 21st century, it's 2021, sculpted charging stations. I think that would be really unique, especially if individuals are spending a lot of time in the park. They would be able to just plug their phone in, appreciate the art while uh, the rapid charge does its thing. So here's just a couple of examples of um, the work that I was talking about, not my own, but um, just to give a visualization and understanding. So uh, if you've ever traveled to like major cities, you might have been able to see these protect your heart stencils on the ground. This is again, uh, this is uncut arts protect your heart stencil. Um, for this, this is again an understanding of what could be incorporated into the ground level that allows people the joy of walking along. If you're able to see something that is a sunflower on the ground or something that relates to Raleigh, maybe an acorn, maybe not. We've got plenty of acorns already, so we might go to some other things, but that's one example. And another is talking once again about neon and what that looks like in a public space. This is uh, Dwayne Linklater's In Perpetuity, which is at the Penn Treaty Park Monument. And just thinking once again about the incorporation of lights. So yes, it can be seen in the daytime, but what if the lights were able to, if you walk by, that is when they light up or they change colors as the seasons change, but then finding a ways instead of just having random lights in themselves to throw them over words. And if these words were crafted into a poetic statement or sentence or an inspirational phrase. See here. And then just a, another example of the Steps of Wisdom by Colleen Michaels at Crane Beach. And this is just again finding ways to incorporate words into spaces that would not normally be seen, just to give an understanding and a visualization. So, looking forward, uh, what are some other things that I was thinking about for Dick's Park? Um, a smartphone app. This again, talking about the, the future. What would it be like for people to have an app that is associated strictly with the park and they're able to access that digital content? It can be a place where photographs of you and your friends that get taken can be put onto the website as opposed to strictly uploading it to like Instagram or Facebook or regular social media. It becomes condensed so people can really engage with each other. Another thing that could be thrown in there is maps, event schedules, as well as a traffic report. Let's say you want to go to the park, but you don't really want to engage with a whole lot of people. Well, if there's a high traffic that day, you can say, all right, well, I'll schedule my time a little bit later. Or event schedules. As we see, Dix Park is going to become a hub of culture and education and nature and environment, and it's going to bring a lot of people together. So it'd be a unique way to have all the people stay on the same page and say, okay, on Fridays, I know that they have yoga in the park. I would like to reserve my space, and you can do it through the application. And last thing would be community chats and forums. And this is, once again, talking about the importance of community is fostering that connection, both in the physical and digital space, because that is what is going to matter in the next coming days. And last thing I'll talk about is why did a writer get chosen for a project like this? Well, for me, I believe the inclusion of literature, poetry, prose, quotes, audience can add an additional layer to art pieces. If you think about what, you, the, what the world is, words are everywhere. We, we see them on our signs, we see them in books, we see them on the street, we see them, they are, they're on the back of our cars, they're on the license plates, they're everywhere. So when we finally take a, reckon, a moment to recognize that words are the actual definitions and they're the descriptions of these things. But what if you were able to create words that not only describe, but they, uh, they express themselves? Uh, point three right here, words do more than explain, they express. Finding a sense of uh, understanding, giving people a different perspective. This is the power of words. Again, another aspect talked about previously is the collaborative possibilities with the artists as well as the designers. There's signage possibilities, thinking about image description, which also ties into accessibility because there are individuals who might not be able to, who might be hearing impaired or sight impaired. If you're able to create an image description underneath the art sculpture, that is one way somebody can experience it. Or if they can hear the description of it in an audio format while they're walking along the pathway, it allows everybody to be able to experience the artwork. And lastly, storytelling. Everything has a story, everybody has a story. 
And when you think about that in itself, you have to ask, who is it that can share the story? Who is it that can bring the story to life? Who is it that can do the work, go into the darker places or the places that have been untrodden for a long time and reveal it, bring it to light? Because everything boils down to story because without story, you have nothing. And I think that is it for me. I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and pass the mic. Thank you so much, Lee. That was wonderful. And with that, then we have our final artist presentation with Mark Regelman. Mark, let me know if you have any trouble sharing your screen. Yep, thank you. Give me a second. Is it full screen? Yes. Nice, and can you hear me? We can, very well, thank you. All right, okay, so sorry about the baby screams from one side and barking dogs on the other. It's a hectic day over here. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Mark Regelman. Um, I know it's late, I'm gonna power through this real quick and I'll try to be extra energetic so you can, it'll be like your, caf your late night caffeine. Uh, I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I have a younger sister. She's <clears throat> beautiful and more talented. And I also have two incredible parents uh, as well. I studied industrial design and sculpture at the Cleveland Institute of Art. Um, these two disciplines were pretty disconnected at the Institute. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how they merged. Um, it wasn't until I read a book called Bowling Alone by Robert Putnam that things, my kind of creative energy started making sense. In Bowling Alone, he talked about the importance of so social interaction, things as simple as eye contact, a head nod, a, a good morning, a hello. These things, communities that have more of these things are happier, they're healthier, they're wealthier in the list of positive attributes to having these kind of minute social interactions um, go on and on and on. So for me, it was a very important moment where, okay, I, I understand how, in, how industrial design and sculpture can kind of merge together and what they can create, um, which is like, kind of reweaving the fabric of community. Uh, so the very first project that I attempted this with was focusing on bus shelters, a place that I spent a whole lot of time in Cleveland um, and, and with other people, but didn't talk. The idea was, oh, I just bring elements from the home outside and people will talk. And people just stopped using the bus shelters altogether. And I had to remove them fairly quickly. And it was a failure <clears throat> in almost any kind of aspect or any kind of uh, barometer. So, but what it did do is it helped me focus my direction. It was really fun installation. Um, I like the scale, I like the site specificity to it. And so it, it kind of set the tone for how I wanted to approach public space. Um, I wanted it to be thoughtful and witty um, and I wanted it all to come from the site and the people that use it. So my approach is very research centric. Um, which results in a variety of different output. And I'll show you a handful of kind of the different things that, that, that this type of site, specific, site, specific, site, ugh, site specificity results in. Um, Bluebirds, this falls under the pathway interventions category. So Bluebirds was designed for a small community on the west side of Cleveland. Um, it was inspired by the area uh, being a stopping point for birds as they migrate north and south. And so these little bluebirds um, were cast in resin with an aluminum uh, perch and they were installed all throughout the neighborhood. It was very kind of an impromptu installations where I was just going door to door asking people if they wanted one on their house or um, in their tree or if they knew of a building that we could install them on. And these ended up being kind of these jewels throughout the neighborhood. The Great Picnic, this falls under the functional category. With this project, I was interested in the kind of identity of picnic, a place of coming together, uh, typically for families. And for me, picnics are a bit of a, a mess. Um, I have a very kind of weirdly diverse family. And so there's a whole lot of love, but also a whole lot of argument. And I wanted this picnic table to reflect that. So I'm using different species of wood, different colors of wood, and talking about the convergence of ideas happening all around food. Uh, stair squares, this falls under the integrated art. Um, so here I was inspired by step sitting in New York City, which is like hugely awesome and really exciting and something coming from Ohio, uh, I, I, I didn't quite understand until I, until I moved to the city. So these are 
small little tables that are custom fabricated to fit on this specific set of stairs. And they act as a kind of a functional unit, a table between two people to have lunch or dinner or where someone can set a coffee and relax, but just creating a more formal engagement on um, this place where people were already gathering. A more recent installation in Alexandria, Virginia called Groundswell, I installed this just a couple months ago. Here I was very much inspired by the city's um, waterfront history. Uh, it has a really kind of bonkers history in general, but its waterfront history is unique because um, it was kind of a lofty, uh, it was described as a city on lofty banks. And they, through a, a number of kind of absurd measures, continue to extend their waterfront into the deepest parts of the Potomac and pilings were a big part of how they did that. Um, and so I wanted to try to blur the boundary between land and water. And uh, so the pilings are, ref uh, the height of the pilings, which range, um, that, is uh, that is based on the depths of the Potomac and the pilings themselves. I wanted a material that kind of captured the patina of the area um, also something that would age over time. This is a temporary installation for a year, but also something that was very dynamic. So they had these kind of blue, mirrored blue inlays on the tops of each. And so these also be kind of a, have become this very functional element um, where people are kind of standing on them, gathering on them, having lunch, meeting friends. Um, the Washington Post recently did an article about this, but um, the part that I most appreciated about the review was them talking about that this installation was playful, but made a point. And they talked about the history in which this project was trying to capture. And in my work, I try to have that balance always, um, in part because I want my parents to enjoy the installation. They're kind of non-art folk. Uh, and I want them to leave an installation with a really meaningful experience. And I also want my sculpture professor from undergrad, Charles Tucker, to be able to come there and also have a really interesting experience with the work, but in a different way. You know, he would appreciate some of those more um, kind of historical narratives that I'm drawing on for the piece. Um, the last project I'm going to show falls under the play category, um, and this is you know a playground. So I designed the Domino Park playground uh, at Domino Park here in Brooklyn, and I was interested in the sites. Uh, kind of sugary history. This is Domino Parks. It was like the epicenter of sugar, sugar manufacturing in the United States. They're producing at like at their at their peak 75% of the world sugar, right? absolutely bonkers. And so I wanted to create a playground that kids were a little bit afraid to go in. I wanted to keep that industrial aesthetic. And, and the idea is that kids enter as sugar cane. They go through the manufacturing process of uh, being filtered and spun, uh, the centrifuge at the end, and then they're ejected uh, as either uh, raw sugar uh, molasses or like, you know, garbage or something. So there's kind of weird signs about it and it's kind of a weird quirky space, but very much focused on play. And these are a handful of other projects, upriver, downriver, meeting house, formation, the reading nest. So I'm always exploring new materials that um, kind of reflect the site, uh, new shapes, new forms, new experiences, but in everything, I want there to be a kind of a playful experience, <clears throat> but also trying to make a point. Uh, so, um, for each of these, I want the site to inform the experience. So I come to these without a preconceived notion of what should exist um, and let the site do a lot of the work for me. My process is, uh, the, the first part of my process is most important, so research. Reaching out to people to understand what the heck is Raleigh all about? Observation, how do people use a site throughout the day? Is it something that's gathering is more important on the weekends or during the day? What does it look like in the morning? How does sun hit it? Documentation, what are the textures, patinas, architectural details? Again, what is the identity of this site and how can that be captured in some way or contrasted in some way in the artwork? And then lastly, and most importantly, engagement. For these projects, um, Lee is connected to the site, obviously, and probably will be for many years. I'm an outsider. So understanding what gets the community excited, whether it's kind of tactility or color or scale, um, that, that information really helps me to create an artwork that is, again, tethered to the site. And so for this, what is Raleigh's connection to nature? It seems relevant, you know, is oak tree it? What were these oak trees used for? The, the kind of shipbuilding, the shipbuilding industry. Uh, what does that daily connection to nature look like and feel like? Uh, Raleigh has very unique architecture. Is there something that really seems relevant or lost or forgotten? Um, and Dick's Park, what's it about? Who fell in love here? Was there a baptism? What's the history? You know, just like, are there any weird stories that community members can offer that will help <clears throat> be the seed for um, kind of a large scale public art project? I take all this information, 
I create kind of a long checklist. And then as I'm sketching, as I'm developing ideas, I'm trying to make sure that you know, these things are addressed or as many of these things are addressed as, as can be in the final artwork. Um, so I end it there. Again, I don't have ideas right now. Um, I'm trying to understand the site. I'm trying to understand the people that will be using the site. And once I have that information <coughs> gathered up in a kind of nice tidy package, then, then I put pencil on paper and really start to develop something. Um, and I will kind of end it there and, and hope people have uh, you know, some ideas, stories, or something interesting to share. Thank you, Mark. I think you can stop sharing your screen when you have a moment. There we, we go. Wonderful. Well, um, thank you all for your presentations um, and, and helping us understand a little bit more about your artwork and, and process. Um, I know those were really quick <laughs> presentations to, to go through. Um, I did want to open it up now um, to, to the community members who are here for, for any questions that you might have for the artists, um, for the project in general. Um, we, we have the project manager here tonight as well, um, you know, or process. Um, and with that, I'm going to just take a look and see, see if anyone see. has a question. Dolores? Um, no, I don't have a question. I'm just blown away by the um, awesomeness of all three presenters. I think with Donald Lipsky's um, experience and how he's just been everywhere, Virginia, New York, Minneapolis, Texas, you name it. My favorite was the seven foot uh, sunfish. That was just awesome. Um, I think with Johnny Lee Chapman, with him being homegrown, and being um, young and innovative and understanding the need for that technology piece was awesome. I was impressed with the last artist, um, Mark Riegelman, when he talked about how important it is to research and observe, document and engage. I mean, that's the essence of what the, all these committees have been doing. And whether he's an outsider or not, he just has a richness um, to understanding public space. So um, I'm just excited. I, it, it's just phenomenal. Um, I applaud the committee and the people who were able to narrow it down. Um, we have a world-class area that we're trying to produce. And I think these are world-class artists. Thank you. Dolores, that, that was wonderful comments to hear. And um, does anyone else have any any questions or comments? Oh, Will. Will, you're still on mute. I'm sorry. Will? Will, can you hear me? I think you're still on, on mute. There, there we go, go Emma, there. <laughs> sorry. Um, each one of the presentations um, generated a whole series of ideas. Um, and um, as you know, Kelly, I'm also a sculptor. And so I said, oh, you can do this, you can do that. So it was pretty exciting listening to each and every one of them. I've seen, um, I, of course, like Donald's um, uh, pieces, I, I am thinking in terms of Donald and Lee getting together and crafting these words out of these big bulky wood things and how wonderful that might be. Um, but I, I, like, I like each one of uh, the artists. I'm very impressed and um, I'm just excited about uh, what's gonna come out of this. So that's all I have to say. That's great, thanks, thanks Will. Yeah, I, I think um, this, is, this is also one of our first projects where we have multiple artists working in a project area together. Um, Dix Park is obviously a very important place for us and this uh, plaza and play is a very important place. And so having, having different voices was important to the committee. And I have to also give um, a lot of credit to, to the artists for their, um, their, for their willingness to, to bear with us in this and then also collaborate. So yeah, thank you. Um, other, other questions? Oh, Will, you were gonna say something else? Um, yes. Um, how are we going to go forward 
with this process? What, how do we figure out what the next step is for the artists? So at this, this is a, a we have a very quick turnaround for this initial phase. Um, if the artists are going to come up with something that's going to be heavily integrated into the park design, they need to supply uh, supply some information about that, you know, such as location, material, how it will be integrated um, by this November. So they're really working now to gather information, like Mark said, do a lot of research. They're talking a lot to each other. Um, we're, we're having meetings with the design team as well to, to just understand the opportunities available. Um, and so by September and October, you know, we hope that some ideas will be formalized where we can come back um, to the community and, and get a little bit more input on those before they start to develop them further. Um, and this is this first phase, they were on a concept design contract for this first phase. The next phase will go into more, you know, final designs and, and fabrication and installation. So um, we're really just trying to meet the deadline for the, the design team um, in, in case that we can we can really get in and integrate artwork. If it's a standalone sculpture and will you know this, then, you know, it may be like we're going to put a pad here and we'll give you the rest later, you know, so we have more time in that case. But um, anything that might be integrated, such as some of the ideas that um, Johnny Lee Chapman showed, you know, that may be integrated into the pavers or concrete, like that, that's, those are the things we need to figure out at this time. Did that answer your question? All right, I'm gonna keep looking for hands, Cameron. Hey everybody, I just wanted to say that it's so exciting to see the initial stage of all of these ideas kind of percolating with everyone and, um, I work for an organization called Art Explosure that has a lot of experience doing large scale installations in Dix Park. And that, that was probably the biggest thing we did over pandemic was a, a local artist and neon installation there and some other elements. And what I loved about that project was I finally found my way around Dix Park. And I'm really excited that this artwork will serve as a bit of a landmark that will really make Dix Park a little less intimidating for even I've lived in Raleigh basically my whole life and I still would get lost there until I did that the art installation. And I just think this is such a great combination of of mediums and interests and I, I'm just so looking forward to it and and also looking forward to seeing how the the history of the park that you know is is varied to say the least uh, will be incorporated into this artwork and acknowledge the past but also also move forward into what it can be for the community. That's great. Thank you, Cameron. Tara. Hi, I'm looking forward to seeing the final product. Uh, I say thank you to all the presenters. And uh, I've been part of this whole process for a while now. And I'm glad that all the presenters want to integrate history of the area into the final product. Uh, I've noticed that we don't have, um, as far as I know, uh, any indigenous people that are uh, participating in this planning process. North Carolina has a lot of indigenous groups, federally and state recognized, and I hope that that um, history can be integrated into this park in some way. And there are plenty of ways of how to do that, the different organizations that can help with that. Thank you, Tara. We did have, oh, Grayson, were you gonna take that? You go, go I was, on. yeah, um, we, we have been working with some indigenous populations. Um, I see it in the comments, a land acknowledgement. Um, We've, we've done a few of those things over the last year in particular. We're really just starting to scratch the surface. Um, and Tara, if you have suggestions on groups that we should be engaging with, um, please send them our way and, and we'll definitely um, see if, if there are any groups that we haven't spoken with um, so far. Okay, I would recommend the North Carolina Commission of Indian Affairs. You probably have reached out to them, but all the indigenous groups have a representative on that commission. So that's a great place to start. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Tara is someone who pointed us to the Carolina African American Writers Collective and another project. So Tara, thank you so much. You're a great resource. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I look forward to seeing the different um, uh, poem poets that are going to be featured at some point through the park, since we have so many um, local artists or local poems that can be or poets that can be uh, featured. That's right. So before we wrap up with um, kind of our next steps and then providing information again, I just want to, I want to open up anyone who hasn't had a chance to, to make a comment or ask a question. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and you can also ask in the chat if you'd like, and I can read it too. Ah, suggested reading material. Um, does anyone have any re reading material to suggest to the artists? Um, I think we have provided some, the master plan, um, the legacy, um, the history um, document that the legacy committee put together, um, but any other books about Raleigh or the area or the park that they should pay attention to? Or, or poets. I definitely will recommend uh, picking up the 25th anniversary book of the Carolina African American Writers Collective called All the Songs We Sing. The book has both poetry and short stories that you can draw on and all of the people featured in the book are part of that collective, which got to start here in Raleigh. I'm putting that information in the chat right now. Anything from anyone else tonight? Okay. Well, with that, I'm I'm gonna say, um, oh, okay, I will read this one piece. The sunflower field has been a big hit in the summer. I would suggest incorporating theme of sunflowers for year round enjoyment. I don't think we've talked to the artists yet about the sunflower field, but we will. Yeah. Um, that is is a big hit um, and it, it draws a lot of people to the park. It's, a little, it's on the other side of the park from this project, but um, it may be, may be good to reference. Um, and we can show you some images as well. Very good suggestion, thank you. Donald? Uh, yes, I'm, I just wanted to comment. I was looking at the participants here uh, and noticed that there's a man named Johnny Chapman, which I can only imagine is uh, Lee's daddy. And I just love myself, I have a son, Lee's age. And so seeing his father here is there's something uh, extra beautiful about that. So I just wanted to comment that I really enjoyed that. Yeah, half my family's on this chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a lucky man and they are a lucky family. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you, Donald. I, I, uh, for me, uh, the, the idea that uh, that we might have uh, some sort of interaction that'll lead to something beautiful here is, uh, is great. And it's, it's not just that you are of Raleigh and no Raleigh, uh, but your, uh, your mind is just overflowing with, with ideas and uh, it's beautiful. And I know that I'm gonna really enjoy our interactions, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, um, I will wrap up our meeting um, just by showing, uh, I want to go back and show the screen of information um, that we have. Uh, well, log me out, but um, I will show our website. Um, 
and and just let everybody know that we would love to still hear from you if if you have some lingering comments or as you're thinking about the project and want to to give the artist some information um, or just stay up to date you can subscribe to the project through the public input page i'm going to go ahead and just share that screen so you can see it now um, so it is publicinput.com plaza play art and a little bit of information about each of the artists just so you can go back and look um, and then timeline. We, of course, will post our, our meetings here. Um, some will be virtual. We're working to see if we can get something in person in, in September. Um, so we'll have news about that soon. Um, and then this is also where we will be posting information about um, any surveys or concept designs that we need some input on. Um, and you can also subscribe to the project. So if you'd like to um, stay up to date with the project, um, and, and get emails directly from us, we encourage you to, to um, visit this site where you can subscribe as well. And our information is on that if you'd like to contact us directly by email, um, you're welcome to do that. So I wanna thank everyone for your time tonight. It was really valuable. And um, we look forward to seeing you as we continue through this progress together. <laughs>